In this problem, we're told the fastest measured pitched baseball left the pitcher's hand at a speed of 45 meters per second. If the pitcher was in contact with the ball over a distance of 1.5 meters and produced constant acceleration, A, what acceleration did he give the ball, and B, how much time did it take him to pitch it? So I'm going to start this problem by writing out the given, and then I'm going to explain what's going on as we do this. So you always want to write down the given and look at your kinematic equations. So I got these on the right, and these are what we use to solve these. And so you're going to look at each variable and decide whether or not you're given it. So write down each variable. So v, v equals v sub 0, t, a, and delta x. So essentially, these are your five variables. Let's decide if we have them or not. So the fastest measured baseball left the pitcher's hand at a speed of 45 meters per second. Right. So I'm going to try and draw what's going on. So imagine we have this hand here. So this is going to be the hand. And so, so here's our hand. This guy has this ball. And he's going to be throwing it, and we know it's going to leave his hand. So this is the beginning of his hand, right? It's going to travel 1.5 meters because it's he's in contact with the ball over a distance of 1.5 meters. And then his new hands, right? So his hand's going to be here now. And so now he's going to have the ball. And then at this point, we know it's going to be leaving his hand. He's going to be throwing it. So imagine he starts here, travels this distance, and then at this distance, or at this point, he's going to throw it. And so at this point, it's going to be leaving his ball or leaving his hand at 45 meters per second. So that's just a drawing what's going on. Uh, so V, the final velocity. So during this time, what's the final velocity? Well, we know it's 45 meters per second. And the reason we know that is because it's leaving his hand at this. This is the final velocity. So the final velocity is 45 meters per second. What about the initial velocity? So think about when you're throwing a baseball, right? The velocity when you have it in your hand in the beginning. So this is the end of the interval. This is the beginning. At this point, the velocity of the ball is nothing because he's not moving, right? He doesn't move. Uh, until he starts, until this distance, right? So he's not going to move. So we know the v sub 0, or the initial velocity, right, is going to be 0 meters per second. What about time? Do we know how long it's going to take? No, right? Because in B, they're asking how much time did it take him to pitch it. So we don't know the time. That's what T stands for. So I'm going to write T equals question mark because we don't know. And then the next one is A, acceleration. We also don't know that, right, because it's asking what acceleration did he give the ball. So once again, A equals question mark because we don't know. What about delta x? So delta x is essentially a distance. It's how far you travel. It's the change in your position, right? And so what's the distance we're given? In this case, 1.5 meters, right? The change in our position is 1.5 meters because we're moving a total distance of 1.5 meters. So these are, this is what we're given. And what we're going to go ahead and do is solve for the first one, A. So A is what acceleration did he give the ball? So keep in mind, we're trying to find A first. So A. If we take a look at our equations here, right, because these are the kinematic equations, this is what we use to solve problems that have a constant acceleration, right? They tell us it has a constant acceleration. So let's determine which equation to use. So notice what we're given. We're given delta x, we're given v sub 0, and we're given v. So this one does not contain delta x, so we're not going to use that one. This one doesn't contain a, and that's what we're solving for, so we're not using that one. This one right here does not contain v, so we're not using that one, right? And we don't have t, so we can't solve. So we're going to use this one v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. So we're just going to use this equation and plug it in. So, right, because notice how we're given all these variables, v, v sub 0, delta x, and a is what we're solving for. So let's go ahead and plug it in. So v squared we know is 45. So 45 squared is equal to the initial velocity squared and 0, right, the initial velocity is 0, so 0 squared is still 0, times 2, Right, times a, which is what we're solving for, so we leave it as a, times delta x, which is 1.5. So I'm going to combine these, right? Just multiply 2 times 1.5, which is just going to be 3. So it's going to be 3a. And then if you go ahead and solve for a, divide both sides by 3, 45 squared over 3 is going to be equal to a. So if you do that, 45 squared over 3 is 675. And so when you do this and you're using meters per second, Right? And then you're using meters here. Your acceleration is going to be, the units of it, is going to be meters per second squared. So this is the units you're using. So that's right here is going to be your answer for the first question. So your acceleration is 675 meters per second squared. So let's move on to B. So B is asking for how much time did it take him to pitch. So notice how we're using T. And so you can use any of these equations here except for the one we just used, right? Because notice how all these have t and we have every other variable. So we can't use this one. 
Uh, the equation I think is the easiest is the first one right here. So we're going to use that one, but you can use any one you want. So it's going to be v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. So we just plug in. So v, which is 45, equals v sub 0, which is 0, plus, so I'm just going to get rid of it. So a, which is 675 times t, right? Because we're solving for t. And if we want to get t by itself, divide both sides by 675. So t is going to be equal to 45 divided by 675. If you do this, you're going to get 0 0.06666, so on. Uh, I'm going to round right here to the thousands place, so 0 0.067. And notice the time metric we're using, right? So it's going to be in seconds because time is measured in seconds, or it's going to be measured in like some time unit, right? But we're using seconds in this case. So time is going to be... 0 0.067 seconds so this right here is going to be your answer to b so how much time did it take 0 0.067 seconds and so yeah that's how you solve this problem and hopefully you found this useful